We have some work to do. All these orchids were gifted to me by Matt by nature. Thank you very much, Matt. Except for two that I potted up last year before the winter came. We'll do an update on those. And I hope to remember that because you never know. I have a few plans laid out for us today. <laughs> it may go horribly wrong and then I get distracted anyway. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. My first candidate for the day is my Cattleya Maxima Cerula. Has been in an ICU setup all this time, but I think that it is a good idea to get it potted up, for which I have plans with regards to like a little semi-hydro setup here, crocked with broken leka, for the lack of a better term. And then I'm going to be using medium to small size lava rock. So let's see, I've got my tag here and I never removed the media because no need. That bark was super useful, but I may have to now consider cutting a little bit of the microfiber away from the root that grew into it. We have a branch that grew in here. I wonder if I can save that. Let's see if we can peel that away carefully. If I lose it, Hakuna Matata, because the orchid is growing a new growth. And with that, I'm anticipating new roots to come as well. And I'd like to get ahead of the game here and have her in a pot for that occasion. All right. It's always an issue when media is heavy, we get cracked roots. Those are all dead. How far up is it dead? I'll make sure my snips are nice and closed because I don't want to be chopping into something unexpectedly. Dead to the crack. Alrighty, now back here we have this root that has attached itself to the media as well. The hob material that I use. If I say media, that's what I'm referring to because it is a form of media for me. It's my substitute for sphagnum moss. So we'll get that root released. Sorry about the shadows. And I just cut right through it. Doi! Oh well. Hakuna Matata, like I said, new growth is on the way. I would have loved to have not done that, but here we are. We're not gonna sweat it too much. What else have we got going on? Quite a few dead roots all the way down there. Any of the old media that comes off willingly, easily, fine. I'm not gonna be picking away at bark to try and get that off. At some point, I also appreciate that it's there for anchoring the orchid into the pot so it doesn't wobble around as it is doing right now in my hand. And that's all I'm going to do with this one. Let's get our pot prepared. Oh, goody. We've got garbage in there now. <laughs> Low budget production. Okay, so I'm not going to be wasting all my lava rock for the crocking. Even though this leka is kaputski, I sorted it from the sterilization and separation process and I always use it for crocking like this. Because this little orchid is a seedling, I could put it into leka self-watering using small leka. <sighs> I would prefer to make sure that I get it right, that this orchid doesn't struggle with any kind of, you know, miscalculation of the ratio. I'm not gonna experiment with this one. It's still too tiny. It's gonna be perfectly fine in just medium to small lava rock for the foreseeable future. And then we'll just, you know, work with what we've got going on when it comes to a new root system that has attached itself to lava rock. And that is why I very rarely use lava rock because it is such a detriment to the roots when it comes to repotting. But with this little orchid, we've still got plenty of time and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Which I hope that we will do. 
as it grows and matures. Now in my climate, lava rock works beautifully as a media for semi-hydro, even though it doesn't have any wicking in it, it is still highly water retentive and I don't need to put any ceramics or anything like that in there. If the roots accept the media and the orchid grows well, I don't see why it shouldn't. If the orchid grows well, then the roots that grow into the media will be somewhat adapted to an already quite wet and moist environment. And then I can transition her over to Lekka. I don't want to go mad at the base of this new growth. I want to observe the roots going into the media. And that is Cattleya maxima cerula done. Now we're coming to an orchid that is my 2.0. It's the Engracum didieri. Thankfully, Matt by Nature had a crystal ball and knew ahead of time that I was going to lose my original didieri. It just got stem rot out of the blue. What lesson did I learn? Well, it is possible I cannot grow a didieri. That is absolutely possible because my winter conditions are too cold for it. But I'm going to give it a go, clearly, because I have another one and she's growing a new root. But the lesson I've learned about my previous didieri is that it's possible I kept it too wet, even though it never went to the stem. My didieri was nicely positioned above the media. But in the mix of a small orchid top with small lava rock, I had ceramus as a wicking agent. Not going to do that. I'm going to go completely in the opposite direction and use medium to large size lava rock, no ceramus. So in my orchid top, you can see I've made a little bit of a support. I'm going to need it. This is going to be fiddly, so bear with me. If a period of silence ensues, just medium to large lava rock. And let's see. Oh, let's get the tag in first so that the jiggling is at a minimum. Let's get that secured first. And let's see what the didieri has to offer when we take it out of its little setup here. Okay, whoa. Has a lot to offer. Right, we're gonna move on to the next one. I'm going to fill this with some water to release that root. Let's see that it is submerged. Let's make sure that I've got the root submerged in water because that is a nice development. I didn't notice that. From the position I always had this orchid, she was facing me this way and all I thought I was seeing was a new root coming there. This one, surprise, <laughs> fantastic. I'm gonna take the tag out and we'll work with that later. So we'll move these out of the way and get our next candidate because you know, Matt by nature, super, super generous. He sent me another orchid which he has labeled, or the nursery he bought this from was Orchids and More. He labeled this Lelia Perini, or they labeled this Lelia Perinii. I have a Perinii. This does not look like a Perinii to me, but my Perinii came as a mature plant. So, <laughs> what do I know? Maybe this is the way Perinii's look as seedlings. There is a root down below the hop filter. You can see it right there. So we'll try and get that out gently. The orchid has started a new growth, kind of like sort of matured a new growth. It has some suspicious spotting, which I've been treating with not just insecticidal soap, but also with garlic and alcohol. Yes, been painting the leaves. Now let's be a little bit more careful where we do our make our cuts. We don't get ahead of ourselves. I've got my thumb underneath, so I've got my snips touching my thumb. If anything turns red, then that means I cut my thumb as opposed to the root. <laughs> and then we go and do a massive jump cut, should that happen. Right, so we've still got you there. Huh, let me just be very, very careful here. These roots are importante.
breathe. Whew, I gotta breathe there. Right. So you see, it's tried this new growth here. That was during the winter. And my perineum normally only starts new roots during the winter. So I'm not sure what we've got here, but I hope that one day we will find out. So that came with this spotting. My main concern is that it doesn't spread too much to the new growth. And if it does look like it has, that is because of the cold temperatures. So the plan with this one is Orchid Top. It is the safest bet for me. And we're gonna go with small sized lava rock and just watch her grow on. Small seedling, baby, could do small lecker as well. No risk here. I've got Orchid Top available, so we're gonna use it. Okay. We can follow the progress of the little root tip that I see, and I hope you can too. Tucked in there, <laughs> right there. We'll follow the progress, how it's gonna find its way either out and into the dish or just progress and disappear, extend down into the media. Let's revisit the Didieri. If that is still not completely detachable, where are you? Now I'm looking at the screen, there we go. If that's not completely detachable, I'm gonna update you on the other ones. Let me check. Possibly a moment of silence is going to ensue. Now we need a couple of minutes more. Let's do a quick update then. This is Lelia Santina that we potted up before the winter came, doing so much better in the pot, easier to take care of, was in a similar setup for the longest time, but seeing as it was growing a new growth, I anticipated new roots and true to form, here is a beautiful new root that has extended in through the media and is heading down into lava rock. Santina is doing great, came through her first winter with me top notch. Uh, high hopes for this one. Lelia Vasconcelosiana. A rapiculous Lelia I desperately, desperately want to keep in my collection. She is in a little Tulumnia basket because she has absolutely no roots. The Tulumnia basket is there to secure and support the orchid because, yeah, if roots were to grow, I don't want any jiggling to happen. You can see that the new growth she has tried to grow is very minuscule. I see a sliver of white right down in there. I'm not going to lift her up and tilt her. It's that precarious. What I have been doing is on the odd occasion throughout the winter, but really so sparingly, I've just watered some of the ceramics just to keep a little bit of humidity and damp around the base. But having said that, when I say sparingly, I actually left the orchid like three to four weeks without anything happening water-wise in the pot. Because of the cold temperatures, I don't think the pot dried out all the way. It is possible, but I was so careful because there is no room for error here. I don't want her to rot out. It is not looking very, very good. We're gonna still keep trying, but uh, if she makes it, she is going to be just, she'll fit into the category of my little bloom and shiny eye that is growing with one bulb and has had now more growths coming. Mm. Keep your fingers crossed for Vasco Celosiana. And now we're going to address Didieri, or I'm gonna clean up my mess because I still may need more time for that root to come undone for us. Anyway, I'm gonna put these back inside, buy myself more time, then we're gonna look at Didieri again. I'm not comfortable doing this. Wow, that root is really, really tight there. So I'm gonna get my scissors. We're gonna cut her out of this little container. This is a first. I've never had to do this with an orchid before. <laughs> Plenty more where they came from. Ah, Didieri is a sparingly growing root grower.
So I'm glad I left the fiddle one for last. <laughs> that was not my intention at all. If you're still with me, thank you very much. How about taking this opportunity to like the video before we do anything drastic? And then you're like, oh, please like the video and don't change your mind no matter what happens from here on in. Thank you. <laughs> I really want to try and use the contours and the softness of the bottle to now try and release the root. So I managed to get the tip released. Yeah, I got a little bit of damage right there on the tip of the velamen, and that could be the end of the progress of this root. Didieri roots are super fragile, and Graecum roots anyway hate being messed with. And all this is considered messing, literally messing around. There we go, I've released it. Oh, okay, it's not a hot day today, but I just, uh, <laughs> nurse, I need somebody to come and take care of my forehead. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of all this. We got a root going into the material there, so we're gonna remove all of this down here. Got it. Got that one. <laughs> Ideally, I do want to try and get rid of as much of this hob filter material as possible seeing as I don't want it to be as wet as the last setup was with the ceramics, the hob filter material retains a lot of water. So the idea being to not have that much of it in it. Otherwise I would go, you know what, that can stay. So the only reason I'm being a little bit fussy about removing it now is because of, yeah, trying to do better for the overall long-term environment of the pot and the setup. Whew, I think we're good though. That's all I'm going to do and I don't believe I ever touched the root tip of the Didieri. Ah, this one though. Oh, it's so beautiful and it's so sad. It remains to be seen. Grrr. Right, let's get with the program here. I have a cockatoo in the background protesting, like, hello, it's my time. And I'm like, yes, I know. I know. It's time for Les Animaux at this time of day. Didieri threw me for a loop there for a moment. As I place the lava rock back, I'm super mindful of that root tip that is in here. It's right underneath the hob material there. Yes, I want it covered, but ooh, don't want to smash it. Right, that's my Didieri Tetris out of the way. I still have a little bit of the root exposed right here. Maybe I will take a smaller piece of lava rock and give it something to nestle up against especially when it comes to humidity. Don't want to do anything there. Ah, oh, nope, not there. Okay, so something like that. Huh. We'll wait and see. Yes, I'm going to keep the support long, even though this is a slow grower. At least it's got something leaning up against it. And if I think I'm going to poke my eyes out, which is always a possibility, then of course I can still shorten it. But for now, that's all I'm going to do because, you know, while you feel you're ahead, stop. That's the time to stop. Just going to put water into the dish from the top, pretty much with all of them. I know, for me it feels like a long time ago since I started this. Seeing as the media is dry, I'm just going to wet it and leave the, some water in the dish. Ideally not in the crown or anywhere near the structure of the orchid. <laughs> 
I can feel myself still shaking from removing that root for out of that bottle. Seeing as it's mild after I finished filming, these orchids are going to stay right where they are in this position because there's a light breeze going, it's pleasant. And this way they can benefit. Well, the roots were wet on my Maxima, but we're going to wet the media now as well. Sorry for the clanging of the gates there. If you heard that, if I can't edit it out. Whew. Anyway, <laughs> the plan of this video, the intention, it has been completed. Wow, unexpected little curveball there. But anyway, I'm glad that you stuck with me. I'm glad that you kept me patient and kept me focused. Your support is so appreciated. Thank you for watching the video. Any questions, anything that you're questioning about the media choices, if I didn't do a good enough, clear enough job in explaining that earlier on, please, I can continue to clarify in the comments. So have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye. I hear you, Siliano, I'm coming. <sighs>